Hi, welcome to Business Influencers with Tell Radio. My name is Chris Salem, your host. We want to welcome you if you're new here to Tell Radio and the Business Influencer Network. We are so excited to have you here again as we each and every week we share insights to help move you and your personal success to the next level by creating more influence and more impact to help the people that you serve. Now, you found us here at Tell Radio, but you can also find us on Spotify, Apple, and also our YouTube channel at Business Influencers with Tell Radio. Today's show is being brought to you today by Alumni Direct. Alumni Direct is a new social media community platform dedicated to bringing alumni together from all different generational types and an opportunity to rekindle old relationships. Now, this is a not a, a membership program, meaning that it takes all the noise out of social media, allowing you to come in to generate genuine and authentic relationships with those you choose to share content with on your time. And in addition, it also features a athlete's corner, meaning that from athletes that are going to everyday life, an opportunity to now connect with other athletes where now they can learn to make those transitions, not alone, but together and allow them to share their insights, experiences, and helping each other to move to the next level. If you'd like some more information about Alumni Direct, check them out. And we also want to encourage everyone that we're going to be talking to uh, some women leaders here today with Team USA. And we, we're going to have in, in the uh, notes here an area where if you want to contribute and, and help the athletes that are going to be participating in the MMA coming up in late October in Romania, you're going to get that opportunity. But I am so thrilled to have uh, today some, you know, women leaders with Team USA. Where the, today's uh, session is called Business Insights from Women Leaders with Team USA. And also we have Butch Chalea as well on the advisory board. So I'm going to formally introduce each of them before we bring them on to the show. And this way you're going to get a lot of great value in terms of, of, of what they're going to share from a business perspective, not just an athlete perspective here. So our first guest we have here is uh, Janae Noonan, uh, women's team captain. She has been on Team USA since 2012. Uh, that year, she brought uh, brought home a bronze medal and made it her goal to train harder and return in 2016 for a gold. She accomplished that gold in 2016 by winning a gold medal and a silver, and she proved herself again by 2018 by winning another gold medal. She is also a three-time best-selling author, founder of a nonprofit called Stay, Stay Safe, which teaches women and children safety skills. She has made it a lifelong goal to lead by example and to constantly push herself to try new things and achieve any dream she has. This year, Janae leads the women's team as the team captain. So we also have uh, Jehan uh, Isgar, and she is a TEDx speaker, third degree black belt, circus performer, uh, uh, polo sport champion, kinesiology professor, and the owner of the Stage Global in downtown Pomona. She has traveled the world teaching uh, pole and circus arts, and she believes that movement and liberation uh, and her goal is to empower people in their bodies and to help build communities through a shared love of movement. She's reviving her martial arts career this year to fight with Team USA at the World Pancration Championships in Romania. So again, we're going to uh, share some more information on that here during the show. And finally, we have Butch Chalea, Advisory Counsel with Team USA. Butch serves as the CEO of BizConnect 360, a dynamic organization dedicated to empowering businesses and entrepreneurs through innovative solutions and technology. Under his leadership, BizConnect 360 has emerged as a trusted partner for companies seeking to unlock their full potential and achieve greater results. His involvement with Team USA will continue as the United States gears up to host for the first time the prestigious World Championships in 2016. His involvement with Team USA not only showcases his dedication to fostering growth and success, but also his unwavering belief in the power of perseverance, discipline, and teamwork. And without further ado, we welcome here Butch, Jene, and Jihan here today. How are you doing today? Hi, everyone. Doing good. Thanks doing for having us. Thanks for having us on the show. Yeah. Well, I want to let you know, this is a first that we've had three guests on at the same time for this show. So this is a first. So you guys have uh, broken the ice for that. We've had two, but not three. And uh, I'm so looking forward to learning from all of you here today. So what, what, if, what, what do we like to learn a little bit about, you know, from insights from women leaders here? You both are dynamic women leaders, both in business as well as in the athletes area. 
What can you share that you've learned through your journey as a professional athlete and what that has, how you've taken that into the business world to lead others and create impact? Um, Jeanette, I think, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say who's going to go first. Um, I think some of the things that I've learned through martial arts is that the pure determination just to keep pushing forward and uh, to figure it out. So sometimes in business, we hit a brick wall and we just have to figure it out. Well, sometimes in boxing, I get hit in the face and I just have to, you know, take that hit, take a deep breath, get back out there and, you know, figure out a different strategy really quick on the fly before I get hit in the face again. And um, so I just take that into business. Like sometimes we're going to get hit a little bit and we just got to take a deep breath and we got to figure out a different strategy and figure out how to work through and to get through it and, and, and make it work. I love it. So it's just, again, we know that you're going to have like in business, there can be distractions, there can be challenges, letdowns, but you're not allowing that to now distract you or derail you. You're going to get punched in the face, but you're going to get back up and you're going to keep going, you know, out there to win. And I love what you shared there. Jahan, how about from your perspective? Um, from my perspective, the the big thing that I feel like I'm always talking about is the importance of leadership skills in running a business, and especially for women. I feel like this is something that uh, you know society as a whole does not focus as much on um, fostering leadership in women. Um, and this is something that I feel like being an athlete, I feel like, especially being in martial arts, I feel like I grew up with a lot of very natural leadership skills in terms of, you know, how to how to manage people's space and time is really one of the things that I'm always talking about is that that is such an essential quality to have. Um, and, you know, being able to motivate a team or deal with, you know, your, your team having you know, disagreements or noticing, you know, who, where are the strengths in certain people on my team and who can I rely on for certain types of tasks. So having to strategize as a leader, I think is something that I really learned from being an athlete and learned from martial arts. Yeah. Um, that's something that I bring into the business. And even I think of taking that even further in fostering leadership within others so that women of the next generation are also growing up with that type of mentality. So, you know, I really see myself as trying to have a business that is creating even more women leaders in the world. I love it. So you, you would say that, you know, it starts with self-leadership. And what I heard what you were saying, that the importance of communication to yourself and others and how you display that, you know, when you're competing, but now also in the business world, because we just a lot of times people just assume and speculate that we're communicating effectively and we're not. And and again, if we if we don't understand our role and our duties like we think we do and know how to play to our strengths and offset our weaknesses, then we're not going to win as a team. So it's that that's where that communication. I love what both both you ladies shared there. Uh, it, that you know what demonstrates really effective leadership to you know win in the business level. Butch, what would you like to share from what uh, both of them shared here from a business perspective? Um, I think I've actually seen and walked them walk to walk and talk to talk. Right, these two are the strongest ladies, strongest women I've met in just a variety of different arenas, and the way they conduct themselves the way they love on the community, the way they lift people up. Um, they're a, they're a, a, a real pull up kind of leader more than a, more than a push from the back kind of leader. And, and I think it's really refreshing to see that it's a very unselfish attitude is what they have. They both operate from abundance, Chris, which really helps the cause. So their level of charity um, is un is almost infinite because they just know that it'll never run out of opportunity because they just keep creating. Yeah. So I've had a front row seat to some extent, um, been real privileged to do that. So I'm just enjoying the process. That's awesome. I love it. And, you know, going back to you, Janae, what would you share like as a, you know, a woman leader, a successful business person, you know, athlete, you know, what are some of the things that you've learned in your journey that have made you an effective leader? I think some of the things that I've learned um, on my journey is, and I was going to double down on what Jahan was saying, is just looking at what people do bring. Um, I remember growing up, my mom would always say, you can't get blood out of a turnip. So 
um, what, what is, how does this orange help the process and how do I help this orange be a better orange or how do I take this banana and, and add, make, make a ginormous fruit salad and just make this glorious thing work so good. So I'm going to double down on what Jahan said is, is just learning of what people bring to the table and, and in, in, um, fostering that, helping that grow in them. Um, and if they're curious about learning other things, helping them along the way, but it's not for me, the biggest thing I learned was to not try to get the blood out of a turnip was to not get frustrated that the orange wasn't an apple to, to just learn from what the individual person has. Um, as, as a new mom, I've heard that it takes a village to raise a child and it's the same thing. It's, you know, what different things in the village people bring and just, admiring them for who they are and what they are and loving on them for what they do bring to the table and and as a community making the best of what we can out of that yeah i like that and you know again i i you know i've learned what you shared it kind of resonated with me like i you know i look at all the things i've done well things i didn't do well but all the legs i've taken those experiences and now I've learned how can I show up to be better than I was yesterday? Not that that I'm, you know, hey, hey we all want to be the best, but we know that in reality, that's not going to always be the case. We're going to have days we're off. We're going to, maybe we lose a, 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 you know, we lose at some point, but we learn and we grow, but we can be better than we were yesterday. And I think that, you know, for leaders that we're, we, we can build a more sustainable model when we have that approach. I like that, what you shared. Uh, Jahan, how about yourself from what, uh, Janae shared. Yeah, I think another thing I would like to bring up also is, you know, having the quality of emotional intelligence and empathy mm -hmm. in leadership. You know, um, if you can be if you have emotional intelligence, you're able to read yourself um, and also the people around you. And, you know, going back to what you said earlier, communicate effectively. You know, sometimes I think one of the things that has helped me the most in terms of running my business is being very honest and authentic with where I'm at, you know, not trying to pretend like if I'm having a bad day or if we're struggling or something like that, not trying to pretend or cover it up, but just to like tell the team, hey, I am I'm having a really low day today. So this might be a day that I need. I need the rest of you guys to everybody has to step up, you know, and, and vice versa, like noticing when I'm like, OK, I know that, you know, this person needs a break or whatever it is, right? So being able to have that emotional intelligence to help you communicate effectively is, I think, one of those big things. And also being being empathetic to the people that you're surrounded by and really understanding what it is they're going through. Sometimes I know, like, as myself as a business owner, I have certain goals for the business, but I also need to be aware of my staff has their own goals and their own role within the business as well. And sometimes that means they have their own values. Um, and while we are all still, you know, connected to the values of the business as a whole, they have their own role within the business, which means they're going to value what that role is. So I need to make sure that I am treating that with as much significance as everything else, you know? So I'm like, I always tell them, I said, yes, I'm the business person. I have to think about the numbers all the time, you know? But that doesn't mean that I'm forgetting about the humans that I'm that I'm surrounded with as well. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And both of what you shared valid points, because EQ, if we don't understand our own emotional intelligence and what's driving us, how can we be the example and be a resource to help others to listen, to relate and understand, not just respond and knowing that operating from empathy and kindness that you stated is always going to be healthier to build a, a winning team environment versus just to be, you know, go out of your way and please and enable others that keeps them stuck that people learn from what they observe in others and grow from your resourcefulness. So uh, that's what I received, what you shared from there. Butch, anything you want to elaborate on from what the, both uh, ladies shared uh, in terms of their their journey and view on becoming an effective leader? Um, no, I, 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 I watch them live it, right? I watch them really practice what they preach. Uh, they're both uh, very, very phenomenal in what they do and they operate at a high level of leadership and love and, you know it's, that's often a, a combination and i think most people see as either a weakness or a strength and i think a combination of that is is always strength and and i've seen them do that you know chris um an effective leader um 
needs to have a level of compassion and love within that as well. It's the it's the desire to pull people up beyond even their comfort levels. And I absolutely subscribe to that. And I've watched this very evident in both their businesses. So, you know, one of the reasons why I am so excited to work closely with them in this mission for Team USA, which is my only role in this relationship, um, is it allows me to even stay closer to their network because um, I'm I'm a huge benefactor of it all. So that that's my perspective. I love it. I love the the compassion because the compassion is so important because uh, people, you know, it, you have to feel included and feel psychologically safe if we're going to be able to, you know, improve on our weaknesses or or if we're keep making the same mistakes that we can learn and grow from it. And and when you have a better environment like that to do it, a psychologically safe environment, not one that's going to keep you stuck, but one that's going to help to, you know, move you out of your comfort zone, but in a, in a good way is what, 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 what moves things forward and builds a winning team and uh, atmosphere. I love it. Going back to you, Janae, you know, when we look at, you know, what would be some advice that you would be give to, the listeners listen here, like any women that are aspiring to be a leader or already are a leader, but perhaps maybe they maybe overlook something that can take them from being a leader at this level to this level, you know, higher level. I would say to not be afraid. I always like my, my biggest model for anything is to not be afraid at sucking at something new. Um, and me and Jahan work so close together. That's hers too, but she'll, she's really clever. She'll think of something really quickly. Um, but like sometimes we get so stuck in like this is how it's supposed to be done and and if we if it's not working out don't be afraid to pivot don't be afraid to try mm -hmm. something new and don't be afraid to say hey this didn't work out um we're going to pivot again and we're going to keep pivoting i guess that's another fighting snare and fighting we pivot to get out of the way of the punches and so just just don't be afraid at sucking at something new and yeah just just think outside the box too uh, another motto i have is there if they're just you just have to figure it out so that if you want to get something done you just figure out how to get it done and think of think of maybe sucking at something new or trying something new but if, if you want to get something done it's just about the the finding of how to get it done i mm -hmm. built my kid a pirate ship in the backyard and i was like well how am i going to do this i had some pallets we're going to build a pirate ship out of some pallets so it was just the will to build the pirate ship and then the mindset of how are we going to get it done so that that's what I would say. I, I love what you just said there, because, you, you, you know, we don't live in a perfect world. You're never going to have everything up front to do something. We have to learn as we go. So a great leader is not afraid to step out of their comfort zone to do something and not have all the puzzle pieces that we're going to trust the process. Because if we're waiting for the perfect moment, the perfect time, it just that doesn't happen. And I you sparred my when I remember when I when I met Richard Branson for the first time back in 2008, I remember him. I asked him a question. I said, Richard, you're, you, you know, you're involved in a God. How many businesses? 200, 300 businesses. I mean, he, he, I couldn't even keep the count of how many businesses he had under the Virgin Group. And I said, you know, he goes, I go, you possibly can't. You couldn't know everything about all those businesses or be successful at all of them. But please enlighten me. I said it in a very cordial way like that. And he said, Chris, I am so happy you asked me that because you're right. We haven't been successful in all of them. Some of them we had to get to away, but we had to see and try. And we do our best to do an analysis, you know, to get the necessary due diligence up front to see if this is a an industry or market that we'd like to go in. We have to make sure that we're satisfying a challenge that could be better, uh, we, that we could deliver on a result or results that, that people don't have. But we know that we're not going to have all the answers. We're not going to have all the resources, but we got to dive in and learn as we go. And I find that those leaders that are not afraid to do that, and in this case, even you know, when, you, when you're talking from a woman's perspective, that that it that's not going to hold us back. If we feel like, hey, there's something here, we don't we don't know exactly it's going to work. We don't have a crystal ball, but we're we're going to dive in with both feet and we're gonna we're gonna make a, a go with it. And and I think. From an athlete's perspective, I always find that the best athletes have always approached their game that way. And and uh, thank you for sharing that. Jahan, how about yourself with that question that you could share from, you know, that could help a, a woman leader here listening uh, or listening later uh, uh, on the podcast version? Yeah, I have I have two little 
tidbits of advice that, that I'll put out there. The first is that, to be honest, I am pretty apathetic about my gender as a woman business leader. Um, and why say, my, what I mean by saying apathetic about it is that I never go into any type of situation thinking, I am a woman in this negotiation or in this deal that I'm making or whatever it is. Um, because I think if you do that, it sets you up to make assumptions about yourself and other people and your status and what you think they think your status is and all of that. So instead, I just I will walk into those situations knowing that I have as much value and as much power as anybody else in the room. So I never really allow that to be something that is a voice in my head. And so that's my first piece of advice is uh, even if we are, you know, women leaders in business is to kind of drop the attachment to that identity. Um, because I think we can go so much further if you just walk into a room as a human, knowing that you have power and value and status and, and ability and everything else. So, um, so that's my first piece of advice. And my second piece of advice is, is to educate yourself. Like if you want to, if you want to go further in business is you really have to, and especially if you're somebody that is new at this or, you know, uh, which I think most business owners are at, you know, at some point we're just, we're not, I was somebody that wasn't, you know, um, really educated about how to run a business in the United States, you know, when I first started. So I did a lot of, a lot of research, you know, and, and some, you know, I was reading a lot of books, but also I was just watching a lot of movies. right? Um, and that was kind of the fun part about it is that there was, you know, I did have doubts about myself and my ability to do things. And so, you know, me being a performer, I kind of created this, like, this character of myself, you know, and I feel like that really helped me when I was first going into, if I was going into meetings or if I was going into, you know, do a negotiation or something like that. And I did kind of just say like, okay, well, if I was creating a character, you know, like what would that, what would this like business boss character be, you know? Um, and I think, I think that actually really helps um, because like I said, as somebody who is a professional performer, I was like, is some of that like fake it till you make it type of a thing. But I really felt like it wasn't necessarily faking it, but I was just tapping into a side of myself that I was unfamiliar with, you know? So it took a while to be like, okay, what is what is my costume here? And what is my posture here? And, you know, and so I kind of, I, I, I let it be a creative process because yeah. for me, I am. I'm a creative human. So I was like, okay, so let me be creative with this and let me like create this, this costume and this character or whatever it is. And then let me just own that. Um, and so that made it fun. It made it less, you know, intimidating. It made it less scary. Um, and you know, it's so funny how much people believe you. Um, <laughs> I, even do that. I was like, oh yeah, okay. We're buying this. Okay, cool. Um, so, so there was that aspect of it, but I think like do, doing the research, you know, like I'll say this when I work with performers, I always say, if you're creating a character, you got to do your research. So I did a lot of research. I watched a lot of movies. I read, I read a lot of books about business, some fictional, some non-fictional, and a lot of, especially things that I didn't necessarily agree with. I was like, okay, let me look at the people doing things maybe successfully, but doing them in a way that I would never do it. Let me let me read about that, right? Um, and that kind of helped me go, okay, so they're doing it like this, but I have like a rebel brain. So my brain would then go like, mm, okay, what if I did it like this, you know? So that was, that was kind of my process. Wow, great, just great answers from all of you here. I mean, just great. And I know we're getting towards the end of the show, but I wanted to give, you know, Butch, any last comments like from what you heard from both uh, you know, Janae and Jahan share like what 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 stood out for you, Butch, and you know, when it comes to you know inspiring other leaders. This case, not you know not just women, but even you know leaders of male and female. Perfect, and thank you for that. So I'll I'll say this, like you know, the, the title of the show obviously is their influence that they bring and the leadership that they bring to Team USA. So that's exactly what we're talking about here, right? Everything they just described in their personal lives and in their professional lives. They're now bringing to the athletic arena and they're leading a group of about 40 other women 
uh, a lot of which are competing for the first time at these world championships. So, Chris, while these women do, leading from the front, they're dragging 30 women behind them to go dream bigger, live bigger, think bigger, achieve more. But obviously, they need the help of all of the listeners, all of the supporters, all of the community uh, to help fund that so that they can go do the more important things in life, which is lead and change and inspire the empowerment even beyond the games. Yeah. So, you know, simply put, there's about a quarter million dollars of financial need there. And we're not looking for three or four people to be able to fund that. We're looking to make this inclusive and have maybe a few hundred people from the community or nationally or around the country listening to the show go, hey, $2,000 to that cost, $2,000 to that cost. And you know what? A hundred companies doing $2,000 um, is going to give us the ability to go do everything that the two of them spoke about today. And if you notice, they spoke for 28 minutes, not mentioning the need for money. Yep. Because that's where their minds and their hearts are. They're on people. They're on here, hearts. Here to They're serve. On here to serve. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is great. I, you know, we we want to make sure all of you listeners here, I mean, you you've received a lot of value here, a lot of great insights from both uh, Janae and Jahan here, including Butch and all the things. We highly encourage you to support Team USA. You know, do this. I mean, there's so many things that you know that are that you, what you heard here. It's not just the sport itself. It's it's the it's the impact that it's giving to the people in so many different ways. And the coming from these ladies' values and and how they're inspiring people to step up in their lives in every role in duty. So it's not just about the sport itself. What it, wouldn't it be great to be a part of that? You know, to support that. That 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 you could help them, you know, achieve these things. That that they're looking at this, you know, not just to win in Romania, but how we're going to win overall and impact lives. So we highly encourage everyone participate. You become a do a, a, do a donor, whatever level that is. Be a part of this and be a part of of the great impact that Team USA is making in so many different ways. And again, we're gonna make sure that link is here in the show notes so that you can take advantage of it. You could also reach out to Butch Direct. We'll make sure Butch's contact information is there as well as my own. So this way, if you have any questions. And with that being said, I wanna thank all three of you for taking the time to be here today. Thank you so much for being here and, and being a part and sharing with us. Thanks, Thanks for having me. You've been phenomenal. Thank you for all the leadership and, and care and support that you provide to us and our organization as well. Well, thank you. And I'm looking forward to having all of you on for a future show here. Well, we'll have that done well before the, you know, the actual games are taking place uh, in October. And we want to thank you listeners each and every week joining us here at Business Influencers. Again, we are committed to bringing in people, as you've seen here today, sharing from their hearts, looking to serve you. This is about you and how, how we can create more impact to elevate your personal and business success to the next level. And it's always about people first and before profits and before productivity. So again, if you want to participate, feel free to reach out to us. Until then, everybody. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next week. Take care.